This is section 2.12, pressure variation with 3G body motion. Consider the case in which we have a container, as this one shown in the figure, and it contains water or any other fluid, and the original level of the fluid is something like that. Then you're going to apply a force in on the container, and the force in this case to the right will cause an acceleration and as a result of the acceleration the fluid will deform in this way as we can see in the figure. So if we look into this simulation on the left hand side that is showing the pressure and the pressure is normalized with respect to the atmospheric pressure means all the values are divided by the atmospheric pressure so the atmospheric pressure in this case is equal to 1 it will give us an idea of how the pressure is distributed so first of all all the surface is at the same atmospheric pressure but now the surface is inclined and as we go down the pressure is increasing, increasing, increasing. As a different as before, when we had a static case, uh, the high so pressure lines were horizontal. Now they look like inclined. So the objective of uh, this section is to calculate the pressure variation in water or any other fluid when the container moves at constant acceleration. Also, we want to calculate the surface inclination. We want to calculate this inclination, this slope. Pressure variation in a fluid with rigid body motion. The general equation for the forces on a rigid body motion are given by this equation. So the most important part are the pressure and the forces due to gravity. This gamma k is just minus rho multiplied by the gravity and this is in the k direction. Now let's look to the figure on the left. So we are going to consider that the gravity is in this direction and our coordinate system is this is the y direction and the vertical is the C direction. <clears throat> now let me expand the term for the forces. So we have minus the gradient, so minus the gradient of pressure is composed by the partial derivative of the pressure with respect to x, the partial derivative of the pressure with respect to y, and the partial der derivative of the pressure with respect to z minus rho multiplied by g in the k direction equal to rho times the acceleration and the acceleration is composed by the acceleration in x, the acceleration in y and the acceleration in z. Now I'm going to call this equation 1 and what I want to do is to look into the variation of pressure when we move from one point to the other. Like in a general form, let's consider that we have a little cube and we want to compute the pressure in this point with respect to this point. So we have, uh, let's assume that we know the pressure in this point. So the variation of pressure is going is given by the variation of pressure in the y direction, the variation of pressure in the x direction, and the variation of pressure in the z direction. So formally we'll have okay, the x in this direction. Now, <clears throat> let's write that term. So dp, I'm only looking for the change of pressure from this point to this point and assume that this distance is uh, dy dx and 
dz. So the variation of pressure is given by the rate of change of the pressure in the y in the y direction dp dy multiply by how much I move in the y direction so that's dy plus the rate of change of p in the x direction and how much do I move in the x direction is dx plus the rate of change of p in the z direction multiplied by the distance that I move in the z direction and I'm going to call this equation 2 and next thing that I want to do is to replace the values of the pdx in equation 2 so replacing 1 into so notice that in the first equation this is a vector equation so it's actually three equations in one so the equation for x y and z so the pdx minus the pdx is given by rho multiplied by ax the pdy is equal to rho multiplied by ay and the pdc is equal to rho multiplied by ac plus this term so we have to move this term is in the z so we have to move it over there so let's do it so the pdy is equal to rho multiplied by ay with a negative sign multiplied by dy plus the pdx which is rho multiplied by ax and multiplied by dx plus the pdc which is minus az multiplied by rho minus rho times g and multiply by dz dp equal to this right hand side notice that in all the terms we are multiplying by the density so the density can be factorized and then we can divide by the density at both sides and cancel the density from the right hand side so that is dp over rho equal to minus a y dy minus a x dx minus I'm going to factorize the negative sign from the terms in dc a c plus g dc now we have this expression in terms of the acceleration in x y and z let's assume that we can have only acceleration in uh, y so the acceleration is linear and uh, we are selecting that we are moving in the y direction so the acceleration in x uh, we can assume it as zero so let's assume this one as zero so the final expression for the change in pressure dp divided by rho is minus a y minus a c plus g d c now what is interesting for the point of view of the uh, pressures is to look to the places that have a um, constant pressure like for example the top of the surface is a place where the pressure is constant because it's equal to the atmospheric in a static fluid with no acceleration we have that the horizontal line or the horizontal plane it was a plane with equal pressure and that was given by h okay now it's not going to be the same in this case we can already notice that the iso pressure or constant pressure on the surface is inclined so let's look into those points in which the change in pressure is 
equal to zero. So at points where pressure is constant, the change in pressure is equal to zero. So therefore, we have that zero is equal to minus ay minus ac plus g multiplied by, okay, there is a dy missing there, dy, ay dy, and this is dz. So at points where um, the pressure is constant, this equation holds. Now, let me solve for dy dc <coughs> or dc dy equivalent. So if I move um, dc over the left hand side, dc multiplied by ac plus g is equal to ay dy. And we need a negative sign. So let's keep this negative sign. Now, we have two variables, and if we solve the uh, differential equations in terms of uh, dc and dy, we are going to have the equation for the isoline pressures. So let's do it this way. So by integrating on the left hand side and on the right hand side, so if we integrate on both sides, and we are going to assume that the acceleration is constant, assume a is constant. So by doing this integral, we have that this term is constant and this term is constant. So we have <coughs> ac plus g multiplied by the integral of dc equal to minus ay, the integral of dy. So we can integrate and by integrating we are going to have a constant so the integral of dc is the antiderivative and the same for dy so we have ac plus g multiplied by z the integral of the derivative is equal to minus ay multiplied by y plus a constant. So solving for c, we have that c is equal to minus ay divided by az plus g multiplied by y plus another constant because this is c divided by az plus g, that's another constant. So if, we, if I call this constant c1, I'll keep this one as c. It's a different one, but doesn't matter. So this is the equation of a straight line. So if you notice, this is the slope, and this is um, the crossing with the um, with the uh, y-axis. So from the plot, we can see that this is a line, and so the slope is given. So you can see it here ay divided by ac plus g ac plus g so this is the slope of this uh, line and the slope is negative so this is the equation for the iso pressure lines so let me plot them on top of our container so we have that this is a straight line with a slope negative slopes given by this and with c constant so that means that if i choose one point over here so and parallel at to to the surface so all those are possible isopressure lines if we compare with the ones that they have in the simulation we can see that these are like isocolor for example the green the yellow and the red. So all these lines represent isopressure lines and they are given by this equation. So this is the most important part from this section. So the slope is given by the radio of the accelerations in y 
and the on the denominator we have the acceleration in z and the gravity.